All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Hamashiach, Malak, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, and Yahweh Shah being the name of his beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. It's Brother Malachi of the W Fight Detroit Camp, coming at you with another cold cut. And this cold cut is entitled The Fourth Seal. So we're going to go to the book of Revelations, chapter 6, and we're going to start at the first verse, right? Because we have to understand we're living in the fourth seal. Like the scriptures say, you have to measure the times. Let's get that in 2 Edges, chapter 9, and verse 1, right? When you read these scriptures, and when you go into these prophecies, you have to diligently measure the times. And before I get that, let me get Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, and verse... I want to say is maybe 10. Bear with me. Because the scriptures speak about how the Lord has done and put all things on times and measurements. Right? So the Lord deals with time. The Lord deals with numbers. The Lord deals with all these different things. Right? So bear with me. Lord willing to come back to me. This is Revelation chapter 6 and verse. We start at the first verse. And I saw when a lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Right? So the Lord, Hamashiach, Yahweh, he was given the power to open up the seals. Right? The lamb is talking about Yahweh. Let's get that in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Right? So the Lord was given this authority and this power to open up the seals and fulfill these prophecies. Let's get 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Right? And there's many other precepts to substantiate how the Lord is the Lamb. Let's get this one. It reads thus. But with the precious blood of Hamashiach, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Right? So, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, he's that land without blemish. Right? Because when you check out in the ancient world to make an atonement for your sins, when you read Hebrews, the ninth chapter, you will have the priest to take up the lamb and slaughter the lamb, and that blood will be used to make an atonement for sin. But Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, being that ultimate lamb, he shed his blood, slack his blood for the nation of Israel for the remission of sins to draw us back to the heavenly father all right let's also get john chapter 1 and verse 29 and we have to understand it's a lot going on in these last days the most high is bringing massive death and judgment john chapter 1 and verse 9 the next day john see if yahweh shot coming unto him and saith, behold the lamb of god which taketh away the sin of the world Right, so the Lord took away the sin of the nation of Israel, right? Because we needed Hamashiach Yahweh Shah because we couldn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly, right? We needed that righteous example to teach us how to walk and how to receive that salvation. And the Lord being made in the flesh after the seed of man, when you read Romans chapter 1 and verse 3, he condemned sin in the flesh. Let's get that in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 15. And it reads, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, he was deadly tempted. When you read, I believe that's Matthew, the fourth chapter, it speaks about how the Lord was tempted by the spiritual demon Satan. Right? He promised him the glory and the riches of the world and of the kingdom. Right, he promised him, you know, these different things. He tempted him that he would make these stones bread, right? So on and so forth. So Yahweh Shah was tempted. So how much more us, man? Being made in the flesh, being subject to vanity, not on that same level of power as Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. We're gonna be tempted on a day-to-day -day basis as well. 
But nonetheless, Yahweh Shah was that land without blemish and without spat because he was without sin. All right, so going back to, matter of fact, let's get Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Because this all ties into the prophecies. This is Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10, and it reads, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Worship Yahweh, for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. Right, so we have the spirit of prophecy, right? That's why we go into these different things. We go into Revelation, the sixth chapter, the eighth chapter, the 22nd chapter. We go into Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and we break down the prophecies and the said perils that's to come on this earth, right? Because what's to come on this earth is death, destruction, and vengeance from the Heavenly Father. Why? Because of the wickedness of this world, right? You got homosexuality, you got pedophilia. You got bestiality. You got the so-called white man that's oppressing the Israelites, constantly rape, robbing, and murdering nations, and being wicked, being spiteful, and being that man of violence, as it states in Psalms 140, right? And also Psalms chapter 10 and verse 7 on down, right? So you got these different things going on, and it's ultimately due to the prophecies being fulfilled, right? Let's get Proverbs. Matter of fact, let's get Syrac. Chapter 24 and verse 33. Syrac chapter 24 and verse 33. It reads, I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all of them that seek wisdom. Right? So the scriptures say we have to pour out doctrine as the prophecies. Right? So we have to go into the prophecies. Let's get Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. Right? And again, the prophets. You know, they didn't prophesy about sweet things, loving things, and cookies, and, and, and ice cream, and, and, and rainbows, and lilies, and, and, and all manner of niceness. No, man, the prophets, they told you what was to come on the earth. They told you about the death. They told you about earthquakes, right? They told you about pestilence. They told you about war breaking out on the earth. And that's what we're starting to see now. Again, the most high brung that fatal a, 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 a you know casualty upon Turkey. You had fifty thousand people that was put to death. The Most High is constantly raising up death angels, right? You just had four killed at an Alabama Sweet Sixteen birthday party. Four people put to death. You had seven people put to death. I believe that was in Texas, right? You had four people just got shot. In um, Northeast D.C. at a funeral And one person was put to death Right, so the Most High is bringing death And destruction upon this world Right, because the Lord is displeased With the works of the land You got people celebrating their birthday You got homosexuals You got pedophiles You got thugs and thieves and robbers You got whoredom in the land So the Most High is bringing judgment to this world As it states in Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 11 So let's bring this out Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8 it reads, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right. So, again, the prophets, they prophesied about war. And that's the sound of the land. When you read Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 22, let's bring that out. Scriptures speak about how that's the spirit of the land. That's the spirit of that this world is in right now. This is Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 22. It reads, a sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction, right? So that's the sound, that's the spirit that's being pushed out in the world. When you read Revelation the 16th chapter, pertaining on to the three frogs, that's talking about the spirits that's being pushed out and hopping on the minds of these different kings, right? The scriptures say the most high muster if the host of the battle. So the Lord is controlling the minds of these different kings to go to war, to destroy and overthrow each other in their paths, ultimately to bring in the next rulers of this planet Earth, which are the Israelites, right? Under Hamashiach Yahweh when you read Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, and Daniel chapter 7 and verse 18, right? So the so-called white man thinks he's in control, but ultimately the Most High is in control of everything. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1. Scriptures speak about how the wickedness of the uh, so-called white man, 
roughly paraphrasing, has blinded him when you read Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 21. So all these nations are fooled, right? So let's get Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 22 again. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. How is the hammer of, of the whole earth cut in sonder and broken? How is Babylon become a destruction among the nations? So Babylon, America, right? United Snakes of America is going to become a destruction among the land, right? It's going to become a, a heap and desert, right? When you read Isaiah chapter 34 and um, 4 and down, right? When you read Revelation chapter 18, right? So this is what's coming on the earth and the prophets are set up to speak about these things. The prophets are set out to push out this spirit of war, of destruction and of evil on this earth, man. And again, this is the judgment of the most high. Right. So let's get um, Ezekiel chapter seven and verse five. And then we're going to go back to Revelation the sixth chapter. Right. Ezekiel chapter seven and verse five. Thus saith the Lord God and evil and only evil. Behold, is come. Salakia and end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near and not the sounding again of the mountains. Right. So the prophet Ezekiel, you know, again, he was given these words by the heavenly father to speak unto the nation of Israel and to Babylon that the day of evil is approaching. The day of destruction, Joe, if not. You can read about that in Psalm chapter 50 and verse 15. The Lord said, call upon me in the day of trouble. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. And a list of other precepts. Right. And again, you got the masses of the people whom I sleep. Right. The Lord told us, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. In the book of First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Right. You got a lot of people slumbering. Right. They worrying about their necks, you know, come up. What drugs they about to sell. They watching ESPN. They caught up in sports. They got different gods. They caught up in fashion. Right? They not worrying about the judgment of the Heavenly Father. They not taking in account. And they not taking in consideration that the Lord is judging the earth. And if you don't repent and get your spirit and your act together, you're going to be put to death. People don't think about that. Chiefly our people, man. Two thirds of the Israelites. And that's why the Lord said judgment must first begin at his house. When you read first Peter chapter four, verse 17. Right. Because ultimately this message is for our people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. We're not worried about the so-called white man. We're not worried about the East Indian or the Japanese or the Asian. Right. We're not dealing with them. We're only concerned about the nation of Israel and you getting your spirit in order. You getting your house in order. You coming back to the Lord and serving him and keeping the commandments and having the faith. Read about that in 2nd Edges chapter 14, verse 14 on down. Reprove thy people. Comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. Right? So again, we're not concerned about Esau. Nonetheless, we have to tell him his judgment. The scriptures say prophesy against Mount Seir in Ezekiel the 35th chapter. Right. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 12. The Lord said he's going to judge Esau by the hand of his people, Israel. The Lord said he's going to make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. In the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter five, verse 17 on down. Right. So let's go to Psalm chapter 18 and verse. Thirty nine. It say, for thou has girded me with shrimp unto the battle. Thou hast subdued unto me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. So that's what's coming, right? The destruction of our enemies, the destruction of Esau, the destruction of uh, uh, Elam, the destruction of Moab, the destruction of Ammon, the destruction of Ishmael, the destruction of all these wicked nations, right? Let's also get the book of Revelation chapter six, right? <laughs> Revelation, the sixth chapter. Right. Let's bring this out. Revelation, chapter six and verse. We're going to go right to the point. 
So again, we're reading about the prophecy. So this is Revelation chapter 6 and verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. You see that? So this is the seal that we're living in. We're living in the fourth seal. This is why you have major death and destruction on the earth by way of these death angels. Right. Let's get Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 11. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 11. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. And that cruel messenger is pertaining to an angel. Right? And angels don't look like damn alfalfa. Right? Cupid. They got their little bow and arrow with a pamper on. That's not how angels look. Angels are fierce. Let's get that in um, Judges chapter 13 and verse 6. Right. Judges chapter 13 and verse six. They say. Um, Judges chapter 13, verse six. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God came unto me. And this countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. Right, so the scriptures say the angels of God look terrible. So when you see an angel, you're not going to talk it out with them. You're not going to be buddy buddy with them. No, you're going to faint from fear, right? Because the angels of the Lord they have a fierce nature, right? So let's get John chapter one and verse. Right, John chapter one and verse. Let me bring this out. John chapter one. Salaki, so bear with me. Because the scriptures speak about how the angel of the Lord visited Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. All right, bear with me. It might be, yeah, Luke. Luke, the first chapter. Let me see. This is Luke chapter 1 and verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. You see that? So when Zacharias seen this angel, he fainted, man. Right? Because again, the angels of the Lord, they don't look like Cupid. Right? The angels of the Lord, they're fierce in nature. Right? You can read about that, I believe, in Daniel the 10th chapter. Right? And the angels of the Lord, they're tall. Right? They often uh, 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 describe and depict it as being real dark, right? The Lord can bring about angels that got four heads. You can read about that in Ezekiel, the first chapter, right? So there's different type of angels, man. You got deaf angels. You got angels that, that minister as the priesthood in the heavens. We read Revelation, the 15th chapter. Okay. So there's different angels and different offices of these different angels. But nonetheless, in Revelation, the sixth chapter, when you read about the fourth seal and that pale horse and death and destruction and killing with the beast of the field, those are death angels issuing out that uh, that order from the heavenly father. Let's get Psalm chapter 103. Psalms 103 and 20. This is Psalm chapter 103 and verse 20. It reads thus. Bless, Salakia, bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So the scriptures speak about how the angels excel in strength, 
and they do the commandments of the Lord, man. So there's no angels in the heavens rebelling against the heavenly father. Like how they teach in Christianity. They teach you that Satan rebelled against God. No, the heavenly father created Satan, man, for a set purpose. When you read Job chapter one and verse six, it tells you how Satan presents himself before the Lord. First Kings chapter 22 and verse 19 tells you how these different angels pretty much minister to the heavenly father. Right. And they stand on the left hand side and on the right hand side. The left hand side represents the wickedness, the dark side, the evil angels. And the right hand side represents the righteous angels. Right. Let's also get Psalm chapter 78 and verse 49. Psalm chapter 78 and verse 49. It reads thus. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Right? So this is talking about when the Lord played the Egyptians. But who are the modern day Egyptians? These Americans. When you read Isaiah the 19th chapter. Let's bring that out. Right, so that which have been is now Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. So the same things that took place during the days of old, those same spirits and same events are coming back around on the earth times a hundred. Right? Let's get Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 1. It say, The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And that swift cloud that the Lord is riding upon is a chariot. Right? The scriptures say how the Lord maketh the cloud his chariot. Let's bring that out in Psalm chapter 104 and verse 3. Psalm chapter 104 and verse 3. Who layeth the beam of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot Who walketh upon the wings of the wind Right you can also read about So I can read about that in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1 Right that's the first seal that was open The fact that the Lord is coming back in that chariot To bring destruction upon man Chiefly the so called white man So it say the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud And the idols of Egypt Shall be moved at his presence And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it right so these americans right the so-called white man these different nations they're going to melt and they're going to be at fear and torment when the lord make his second coming so like his second coming with the chariots right to bring destruction vengeance fire and brimstone upon man right you can also read about that and um i believe that's nahum chapter 2 and verse 3 that out <clears throat> this is nahum chapter 2 and verse 3 it say the shield of his mighty men is made red the valiant men are in scarlet the chariot shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation and the fir trees shall be terribly shaken it say the chariots shall rage in the streets they shall be so lucky they shall juddle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightning. See that? So that's talking about an invasion. When you read Habakkuk, the third chapter, you got the chariots coming back in military formation and they zapping lasers and fire and concentrated heat upon the wicked of the earth, turning them to dust and powder and smoke. When you read second Andrew chapter 13, verse nine, so this is what's said to come on the earth. And again, this is what the prophets of old prophesied about. And you got the modern prophets, which are the prophets of old. If you have ears to hear, they're speaking about the same things in the last days. Right. Now, let's also get um Revelation chapter seven and verse one. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 7 and verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, 
holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow in the earth nor in the sea nor in any tree and i saw another angel ascended from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god in their foreheads right so in other words these angels can't completely bring the destruction in the in the uh in the death upon the earth until the elect is sealed and elect is constantly getting sealed day by day this is why you see more judgment and death going out because the most high is sealing his chosen people and his children in the last days all right let's also get revelation chapter 16 and verse 1 and i heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels which are also death angels Go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vow upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship his image. So in other words, upon the wicked men that was ordained to be destroyed by the heavenly father. Those are the men that have the mark of the beast. You got men that have the mark of the most high. When you read Ezekiel the ninth chapter and you have men that have the mark of the beast when you read Revelation the 13th chapter. So these men that have the mark of the beast are men that was preordained to destruction and death in the last days. Not to receive salvation on the chariots, but rather fire and brimstone burning in the lake of fire. Right. So, again, that's what Revelation chapter six uh, in verse. I believe that was the fourth verse. Right, that's what Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8 is going into, man. Right, the fourth seal, the pale horse, men dying from destruction, men dying from the beasts of the earth. Okay, men dying from uh, pestilence, men dying from all manner of things and all manner of judgments that the Heavenly Father has set up out here. Right, you can read about that and also in um I believe it's Sirach chapter 39 and verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance which lay on their short strokes. Right? Matter of fact, let me bring it out. I don't want to misquote it. Right. I'm gonna burn this out in a while, but let's bring it out, man. This is Sirach chapter 38 and verse. So like it's Sirach chapter 39 and verse 28. It says there be spirits that are cre created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Right. So the Lord created these angels, these death angels to pour out the destruction and appease the wrath of the heavenly father. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction they shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is and when their time has come they shall not transgress his word right right so again that's the time we living in man i want to find that precept right hey sometimes you get for uh, so like sometimes you forget precepts right sometimes you don't remember every precept but Lord willing, we can find it, right? Because the scriptures say how the Most High does things in numbers and weights. And I was just reading it. Matter of fact, it's right here in my face, man. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11 and verse 20. It said, yea, and without these might they have fallen down with one blast, being persecuted of vengeance and scattered abroad throughout the breadth of thy power. But thou hast ordered all things in measure and number and weight. Right. So it's a sad time that the Lord judges man on the earth. Right. The Lord can really judge man whenever he wants to. But he allows the pride of man to build up. For example, how he did with Pharaoh in Egypt. We read Romans chapter nine, verse 17 and Exodus chapter nine, verse 16. He let the pride of Pharaoh build up. Until he was puffed up to the point of no return and the most high destroyed him. Right. So the most high does everything in number. In balance, in just weight. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 1. It's a just balance with the Lord. 
An unjust balance is an abomination. You understand? Let's also get 2 Andrews chapter 9 and verse 1. I'm going to close this out. Second Andrews chapter 9 and verse 1. Bring this one out. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So the scriptures say, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. So again, we got to go into these prophecies. We have to be watchful. As it states in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Luke chapter 21 and verse 36, Mark the 13th chapter, around the 30th verse on down. We have to be watching these prophecies, watching our spirit and understand what's going on in the last days. Understand the times that we're living in. And currently we're living in the fourth seal. So with that, I'm going to give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh. I'm going to say Shalom to next time. Lord willing, this was an edifying video. Much love to Israel. Right? Keep your lamps burning. As it states in Luke chapter 12, verse 35, stay on fire. Pray, fast, study. Right? Pray for the body. Pray for the leadership of WFI. You know, uh, pray for the sincere sheep throughout Israel. You know, constantly stay in prayer. Constantly stay in communication with the Heavenly Father. Right, let me get this one precept to close out. Right, because again, we're living in some evil times. It's a lot of wickedness on the earth. It's a lot of demons. Right, Esau is constantly pushing out the spirit of evil, whether that's homosexuality, pedophilia, rebellion, uh, 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 promoting children to be disobedient to their parents. It's nothing but death, whoredom, adultery, witchcraft madness folly wickedness all manner of lasciviousness just wickedness on the earth man so we have to constantly make sure our spirit is in order right this is psalms chapter 66 and verse 18 if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me so in the last days we can't regard iniquity in our heart the scriptures say, throw a thought, separate from the heavenly father. When you read wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and verse three. So we got to scourge our thoughts, make sure our thoughts are clean. Stop thinking about smoking weed. Stop thinking about a uh, 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 damn how to go commit adultery. Stop thinking about these false doctrines. Stop thinking about going into the world. Lust, women. Pornography. Right. You have to have a clear mind in these last days. And that clear mind only comes from meditating on the word of the Lord. Read on. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God have heard me. He have attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. So we ask the most high to never to turn away his ears from hearing us. Never to turn away his mercy from us because we need the mercy of the Heavenly Father. We need the compassion of the Lord. Without that, we are nothing. Without that, we are destroyed. Without that, we are in utter darkness. Right? So again, pray to the Most High. Beg the Lord to save you. Beg the Lord to protect you in the days that we're coming into because it's going to get worse and worse on the earth. Matthew 24 and 21. It's going to be a time like never before on the earth. It shall be great tribulation. So without the protection of the Lord. Ye are famished. Ye are destitute. Ye are lacking. So with that, all praises to the most high God. Shalom.